Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Anybody who spent any time around little kids knows how much they love dinosaurs. Ask any of them. Dinosaurs are cool. They're unimaginably old, powerful, exciting, and stimulating to their imagination. They can even tell you their names. Brontosaurus, Triceratops, even the three-year-old can say T-Rex. Notwithstanding all that, dinosaurs are largely irrelevant to their daily life. For many people these days, God is like the dinosaurs. He is the ancient of days, exotic, powerful. But all we know about him is from dusty old manuscripts and from digging up old bones and buildings. He's a vestigial part of our life in the so-called real world. God, the dinosaur. Today's worship emphasis on the Holy Trinity is a pretty good example of that. Every Sunday we confess our faith in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but for some reason we feel it necessary to set aside one Sunday a year to make it perfectly clear that we do not worship three gods. We call it Trinity Sunday, the day in which we celebrate the idea that our God is three persons, yet only one God. So today, as we stand once again at the deep end of the pool called the Holy Trinity and prepare to dive in, let us take a deep breath, and if we're really honest, admit two things. One, that most of the people we know don't care if God is three or ten or one hundred in one. And then go on to admit that our number one hot burning question is not, did I get the doctrine right this year? What we want to know is, what difference does it make that we believe in a three-in-one God? In a word, we want to know why? Why is it important that we know God is three and one? Has God himself commanded in the Bible to believe in the Holy Trinity? No, he has not. That doctrine was established early on in the history of Christianity within the first few centuries. The three ecumenical creeds, one of which we will confess in a few moments, the Nicene Creed, these creeds all draw knowledge from Scripture and represent God to us in the three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit, yet one God. God is known and represented in the Old Testament by the Old Testament prophets and writers as the Spirit who moved over the face of the waters and called into being all that is. God is known to them as the Creator, the breath of life for Adam, the recreator, the breath of life for Ezekiel in the valley of the dry bones. God is known as the deliverer for the children of Israel as their exodus from Egypt, present in the burning bush by day, but to Moses in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. God is known in the Old Testament as the righteous judge, the jealous God, the mighty warrior, and many other images. But the image of Father in the Old Testament is barely present, and mostly by inference. God is known and represented in the New Testament as Savior, the only begotten Son of the Father, and the Holy Spirit who moves like the wind for Nicodemus and the mighty wind of inspiration at Pentecost. God is all of these things and more. But to know God as only Spirit or only Father or only Savior would fall short. If God were only Father, He'd still be in heaven, far from us. But God became flesh and blood and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Because He was made man, we can say that we know God. But Jesus Himself has risen and ascended. He's not with us anymore. And so Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit and because of that, we have the fulfillment of God's promise that He would be with us always. 
So all of that in Scripture. Clear as a bell. It's still a big puzzle, though, to have a God who is three persons but only one God. And over the years, people have come up with all sorts of comparisons and representations to help each other understand this, but they all fall short. They don't really explain how the Trinity works. I was thinking about that this week, and I came up with another comparison that falls short, but I like it. To me, it seems as though all of these images of God are like all the gear that goes into a soldier's duffel bag. There is an amazing variety of gear that must go into that great big bag. There's only one way to pack that bag, though, in order for all that gear to fit in. And the soldier knows he must get it all in there because the sergeant is going to want to see it all in good order. So, here's my illustration. Our biblical images and representations and personal experiences of God are like that gear. The doctrine of the Holy Trinity is like that duffel bag that contains it all in good order. And the church is like that sergeant who wants to be sure the soldier's got everything he needs to fight the battle and win. That's why we speak about the Holy Trinity. It's all in there. All the power, all the righteousness, all the love, all the presence, it's all in there. To say that God is our triune God is to say that our God is indeed present in every way we can imagine and in every time and every place. Our triune God is big enough to do what needs to be done, and He cares enough to be present in person with each of us always to the end of the world and beyond. It is important to know that God is big enough, big enough to do what has to be done. And what has He done? God has changed the fate of humanity. He's freed us from the yoke of sin and death and the power of the devil. He has redeemed sinful human nature by His own death and resurrection. He has conquered death itself. He's made it so that death is not an ending, but a beginning, not annihilation, but a doorway into a new birth. So not only do we believe in a God who is big enough, we believe in a God who is also caring enough. And that brings us back to the gospel lesson for today. There's a lot more going on here than just the fact that it happens to mention Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the same sentence. It's also known as the Great Commission, the mission statement Jesus gave to His disciples, His marching orders for the church. Go, He said, and as you go, spread the gospel. Make disciples. Baptize people into the kingdom. Teach them to love God with all their heart and soul and strength and mind and to care for each other, to love their neighbors as themselves. But the words that stand out for me most clearly in this gospel lesson for today are the words right at the very end. Words which we very often just kind of gloss over. For behold, I am with you always to the close of the age. I am with you always. Remember, Matthew begins his gospel in chapter 1 by proclaiming that Jesus is Emmanuel, which means in our language, God with us. And just as in his opening verses, so also in his closing verses, Matthew proclaims and confirms Jesus' words, I am with you always. He is Emmanuel for us from first until last. And so the doctrine of the Holy Trinity is not a wiring diagram of how God is constructed. It's not about structure. Trinity is about relationships. It's an attempt to be true to every bit of what the Bible tells us about God. And I think the greatest benefit of Trinity Sunday is not to be found in trying to explain how it works. The greatest benefit is in answering why. Why is it so important? I think it's mostly about trying to be faithful to all of what we know about God. Trinity communicates. Trinity tells us something important about God. He loves us so much that He reaches out in every way He possibly can and that He is with us always, 
even when we can't see him or when we can't feel his presence. So in closing, if all explanations fall short, perhaps another little parable would help. Once upon a time, there was an old couple, a man and a wife, beautiful, quiet people. The neighbors didn't know them very well, so one thing the man did puzzled them a bit at first. As he worked around his yard or the house, he would whistle all the time. There was no tune to the whistle, but it was contagious and it was constant. One day, the neighbors realized why. The man's wife was blind. Wherever he was, she would know her husband was there because she could hear him whistling. Her husband's whistle told her, I am here. Don't be afraid. I love you. I am here with you always. Especially on Trinity Sunday, we believe in a God who whistles. Amen.